peeps, welcome back to the sewing room. Happy Monday. I am going to get on with either the Lausanne trench coat or the Deer... No, Lausanne trench coat is Deer and Doe. Sorrento jacket is so over it. The Sorrento sew so over dress. Ah! So over it Sorrento jacket. Words are hard. So I finished the skirt from the black cotton twill brushed cotton twill yesterday during the hangout i did line the pockets with cobra corsage lena crepe which i thought would be a great idea except that there are giant white flowers in it and you can kind of see a little bit i was trying to be careful but i kind of so I'm thinking I might just go over that with a sharpie and see if that works. <laughs> but yes, I have got my brushed cotton twill skirt on. It's kind of very utilitarian. I did a lot of top stitching on it. I top stitched the hems down. Usually I hand stitch the hem, but I decided I've done top stitching around the pockets and on the waistband. So I thought, you know what, let's do it on the hem of the skirt as well it feels really nice like I say it's brushed cotton twill so it does feel really really nice and it was really nice to be able to get this project out of the length of fabric I had as well as the Lausanne trench coat and the deer and doe but again and the sew over it Sorrento jacket yeah two two coats two shirt dresses two shirts and another dress to get through by Wednesday <laughs> That's not gonna happen. That's totally not gonna happen. I was really hoping to be finished with Cobra Corsage by the end of April, but that's just not gonna happen. Which is totally fine. It's one of those things, it does happen. I have got on my Cobra Corsage Sew Over It cow neck t-shirt, which I really, really love. This is the Viscose jersey, and I made this quite a while ago, probably about two years ago, at the same time I made my fourth 7319 this fabric is lovely but it does it's it doesn't I think on a really dark background color like this I don't think this fabric does well being washed and worn and I haven't washed and worn this very very often but it is kind of just kind of pilling a little bit kind it's i mean it's not even really pilling i just think the gray t it's it, the black is is kind of turning gray basically so i do love this shirt i will wear this i was thinking about repurchasing because i've sold the 7319 dress that i have made out of this and i was thinking about repurchasing the exact same fabric to make another one with the cotton jersey underlayer rather than the viscose jersey underlayer but i'm thinking now maybe given what I've just said. Maybe I should get it in the cream colour and do that. Although I have got my Savannah dress because the lighter colours look a lot better for a lot longer. So I'm thinking maybe, maybe I won't repurchase the black. Just the, I mean it doesn't look bad. It just doesn't look as pristine as when it first arrived. But then having said that, the Cobra Corsage black cotton lawn did the same thing the minute I washed it it kind of just dulled down a little bit and it's a natural fiber the Lena crepe has been washed and worn a couple of times and it's totally fine uh in fact no not worn just washed washed once but it's totally fine but that is a polyester fabric and I believe I'm not I'm not 100% sure I'm right in this but I believe that it's easier to get colors and stuff to stick on polyester than it is into natural fibers and that they will fade on natural fibers which you know it's just one of those things so the really dark backgrounds is just something to bear in mind but I'm not sure I'm not sure what would you do because I do love that dress the reason I sold it is because I'd made the under dress out of viscose jersey and it just was showing a little bit and I did say that to the person that bought it that you know it's been washed and worn and the um, the under under layer does kind of peek out a little bit and they were fine to buy it so i don't know i don't know let me know what you think anyway it's 11 o'clock me waffling at you is not getting any sewing done is it so i think i need to get on and just start work on one of these two coats or well, trench coat or jacket i'm thinking maybe i will start with the trench coat even though the first thing that i need to do is bow and buttonholes because if I keep putting it off, it'll end up being the last thing on the pile and then it'll be the height of summer and then I just won't need it. Yeah, let's let's start on the trench coat. Wish me luck. Three hours later. It is much later on in the day and I have got 
quite a few bits done actually i've got all the like little fiddly bits done i've made the belt as well turning that through and turning these through in this fabric was a interesting undertaking i managed it but ooh, <laughs> my poor i couldn't have done it with my nails i ended up doing it with tweezers it says fabric recommendations light to medium weight twill or gabardine coated fabrics allow extra fabric to match patterns um, or straps and plaids so i am using a medium weight twill i am of course making life more difficult by interlining it but this is the back panel i have followed that usually what i would do is bind each edge of the seam but i followed their instructions and only bound the one and trimmed off some of the excess and actually I think it's it looks quite nice and I do like the bias the rainbow bias binding on the inside of this I have decided against bound buttonholes because I have fully interlined the skirt portion of this and I couldn't work out a way of not having the interlining of the skirt not be where the bound buttonholes need to go without top stitching it on the outside which might sound daft but I just this fabric frays the minute you look at it and it will probably be fine but the other thing as well is i actually want to do machine buttonholes on these little things these are the bits that go around the arm and then also this is the back belt loop i want to do like a machine buttonhole on this i think it would look weird having machine buttonholes on those and then bound buttonholes on the front I mean, to be fair, I have kind of chickened out doing the band buttonholes. I have done them before, like I say, they came out came out fine. I just, I think machine buttonholes, and my machine makes really nice buttonholes, I think they're just going to be better for what I want from this. So, yeah. Also, I don't have the correct buttons in my stash anywhere for the size of the bound buttonholes, and obviously I could make them larger, but I have cut out all the little doodads to make the bound buttonholes with, so yeah i'm just doing regular buttonholes but yeah i really like how the outside of this looks sorry the inside of this looks the outside is kind of you know it's going to be a really plain coat to look at but then all the interest will be on the inside like proper flash and act like look at the insides of this which probably isn't something that i should be doing on a regular basis but probably something that i will do but there you go anyway it's half past four now i started at 11 so i've done lots of little fiddly bits i'm only just starting on construction but so far i it's it should be quite a quick make i think we'll see we'll see but once i've got the back yoke on i then get to start work on the front skirt panels so i'm gonna get that done next wish me luck two hours later i have a jacket it doesn't have any sleeves yet um, but i think it's going to be nice this this fabric does feel really really lovely and i love the little pops of color it does get incredibly bulky at the kind of intersections of the seams where the bias binding is especially at the waist seam because you have to press both of the waist seam up and they're bound and it's just yeah so it's really bulky where the bias binding kind of goes over the top stitching on the outside looks lovely but the top stitching on the inside is not the straightest or cleanest so i guess the top stitching on the outside is the one that matters because that's the one that everyone's going to see but yeah it does get very bulky in certain areas and i think that if i do make this again i actually might fully line it rather than interline it I, even if i hadn't have added this extra layer of fabric with the interlining it still would have been super 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 bulky in these areas but i mean it looks really pretty it looks really really pretty but yeah i think if i do make this one again which i'm not ruling out because i've been talking about hang on let me hang this up there we go tip you down so yeah i'm ooh, a little bit too far <laughs> so i'm not ruling out making another one of these because i have been banging on about making and a trench coat inspired by this Burberry one with jewels on it. I was going to do it with the green brush cotton twill, the same fabric as this, but I ended up making my Gertie coat with that one and I love it and I don't think that would have been the right one to combine with the jewels that I've got because I, when I was in Saudi Arabia last, did buy five sets of these jewels. I think it might work on this one. It might look better on the Gertie coat, but I think I'm going to do it on a stone background rather than the obviously the black that i've got here so again very much like the inspiration picture that i've been showing you and the jewels i've got 
I've got five sets of exactly the same thing and the jewels on the Burberry trench coat are much more kind of like organic they, they are, there aren't a set pattern that's repeated everywhere so I'm thinking that it might work better on the Gertie trench coat with like the notched collar because I could put the jewels on the collar and then on the back on the storm flap that I like to add I could possibly do pockets like this one has got welt pockets at the front and maybe jewel those edges because the jewels that I've got don't have to be put into that configuration I could play around with them but I do have five sets of those I don't think I want it to be exactly the, I, I like the Burberry one for inspiration but I prefer as you guys know I much prefer sort of symmetry in my clothing I don't like asymmetry that much so having like splodges of jewels all over the place wouldn't work for me and obviously I don't want them anywhere where they'd catch on things like sitting down and stuff I was thinking maybe this would be a good candidate for a jeweled trench coat but I'm thinking maybe the Gertie one might be better but I can see myself wanting to make another one of these because it is a really fun sew and it is a really stylish trench coat I just do think that if I do do it again I'm going to fully line it rather than interline it and bind the edges purely because it's just getting so so bulky and it's probably my fault for it's a medium white twill and it does say light to medium weight so you know I am on the heavier end of the recommendations from the pattern but I still think it's going to work. I'm desperately trying to not get any iron shine on the right side of the fabric. I think I've just about managed it, but it is in a few places getting, as I say, quite thick. It's an interesting, you, you need to press it enough so it looks crisp, but not press it so that you've got shiny patches on it as well. So yeah, it's an interesting conundrum. The next part of the instructions is to make the collar and collar stand and then put the facings together then you can attach those to the coat to finish off the front edge and the hem and then you put the sleeves on last oh, sorry not quite last penultimate and then you have to put on the button loops i really want the button loops but they need to go in a place <laughs> they need to be sewn on right over all the bulk and i don't know that my machine's going to do it Mm. I'm going to try, but we'll see. So yeah, next up, collar and collar stand and facing pieces. Wish me luck. One hour later. Okay, I have just sewn on the facing. So I've got the collar on, facing on, and now I need to trim everything, clip the corners, turn it through, press it, and top stitch it. But... It's currently quarter past nine, so I'm not gonna do it this evening. I am going to wait to come back and do it tomorrow because I am getting tired and I can just imagine that I will fluff up in the worst possible way and cut something that I shouldn't if I try and do it this evening. So yes, I'm gonna call it a night for tonight. Which, I mean, I'm pretty pleased with how much I've got done. This is a new to me pattern. Mind you, if I'd have done this, I, did, I can get the Sorrento done in a day because I have done twice now. I was gonna say, I. I, I I, I still need the instructions for the Sorrento as well so this that wouldn't have been it, might, it would have only, the only reason it would have been quicker is because there's a smaller jacket I mean that's why isn't it because I'm I'm having to do a lot more for this one as well because I'm binding all of the edges on the inside whereas with the Sorrento jacket I fully line I am pleased with how it's coming out I think it's going to be a really nice coat it does get very bulky in places top stitching this edge is going to be interesting to make sure that everything stays in place but i think i can do it i think it'll be fine so yeah i think like i say for the next one if i do make another one i will definitely fully line it to eliminate the need for the top stitching uh, for the well you will still need to top stitch because it's a nice decorative look but i will eliminate the binding and fully line it instead which should be really easy to do and I'm kind of glad that I didn't do the bound buttonholes because as I mentioned pressing this fabric is you need you really need to be able to press bound buttonholes well and pressing this fabric is kind of making it shiny in, in places which as I say I'm trying to avoid it to the best of my ability but it would be very obvious in the bound buttonholes so yeah i'm really glad that i used the rainbow bias binding i think it looks awesome it is very bright next to the cobra corsage but 
I think it's picking out all of the colours in the Cobra Corsage so I'm pleased with that decision. I think it's going to be a very nice coat but I'm not going to get it finished tonight. So I hope you've enjoyed the little bit of waffle that I have shown you. You're going to have to wait to see the finished item till Thursday now but fingers crossed by Thursday I should have a couple of things to show you. So I hope you've enjoyed my day and I'll see you all soon. Bye!